Welcome back 3D SSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3D SSPP software developed right here at the University of Michigan. This time we're going to continue to look at entering forces in the hand loads menu. First off, I'd like to note that in the 3D SSPP manual, you will be able to find a lot more detailed information regarding the angles you can enter in the hand loads menu, including detailed diagrams. If you need additional information about entering hand load angles, then I highly recommend checking out the hand load section of the manual as an additional resource. To begin, we're going to click the task inputs dropdown and go down until we can select hand loads. Click that and then the hand loads menu is going to display. If we look to the bottom of this menu at the button labeled enter hand force and torque by component, a new menu is going to appear that has the same title as the button we just clicked. Now what is this menu telling us? Well before you were entering magnitudes on our respective hands as one value, but that value can be split up into x, y, and z components for a more precise representation of force direction. Say you're pushing a nut driver onto a lug nut that you're trying to tighten. Gravity will be one of the forces acting against you, and that will be represented by a negative z value. I'll put negative 10 as that value. But you're also pushing the nut driver onto the lug nut, and so that will be represented here in this menu as a negative y value. I'll enter negative 20 as the negative y value, and hit apply, and the program will reflect those changes in the side view here. Now you can see that the left hand force is pointed down and backwards. There will also be a torque associated with this action. You're not only supporting the weight of the tool and pushing it forward, but there's also going to be a torque that's going to be pushing your hand counterclockwise while you're tightening the lug nut. This torque is going to be going about the y-axis, and so you're going to be entering a negative y torque value in order to simulate this counterclockwise torque of the drill. It's important to note that if you want to enter a torque value, that you enter hand force and torque using the component section of the hand loads menu, and this is the place to do that. In the main hand loads menu, you will not be able to enter torque. Moving on to the last section of the hand loads menu that we're going to take a look at is the hand force solver section of the menu. But before we do that, I am going to click this button on the right hand side of the hand loads menu titled Zero Forces, which will zero all of the forces that are acting on our avatar, and also select the push up lift direction buttons so we can have a clean slate set for lifting. Once I've done that, I'm going to click the hand force solver button and the hand force solver menu will appear. This menu is going to help you when you want to find out the maximum amount that a person can lift without hurting themselves, but you don't want to figure out that by trial and error. The first thing you'll see on the left hand side is the options section where you'll automatically be seeing both hands selected, but you can choose to do one or the other if you like. Next you'll see condition slash limitation where you can choose from strength, balance, or back compression to solve for. Here I will select the back compression because in this case we're going to say that we're interested in knowing when the back compression forces will become unacceptable for this work task. Over on the right hand side of the menu we'll see left and right applied loads, which we'll leave at zero and then we can click apply and we will see our left and right applied loads go up to the maximum limit at which our hand loads are acceptable. This is less than the back compression design limit for our worker, with reference to the amount of back compression they can handle. From here you can adjust the number for your left and right applied loads as you see fit, but this is a handy tool to quickly determine values associated with back compression, balance, and strength when you are applying hand loads. That's it for part 2 of the hand loads menu. Check out further videos in this 3D SSPP tutorial series to learn more about how the software can help you analyze workplace stress. Thanks for watching.